It's December the 8th and we're concluding our journey through the prophecies of Hosea, Hosea in Hebrew, meaning salvation or he will save. And we're looking at chapters 10 through to chapters 14. In chapter 10, uh, Hosea likens Israel to a wasting vine, to a vine that is going off, that is going wild, uh, because she's multiplying her altars, multiplying the altars to false gods as much as grapes multiply on a vine. And the Lord says that these altars will be broken down because they've not lived in awe, in fear of Yahweh. And there is shame coming because of their connecting with Assyria, because of their going to Assyria. And and the, the terrible thing is it's Assyria itself that is going to be the ones who come and destroy Israel. And Assyria will also take their calf, will take this golden calf that's been set up at Dan Bethel, and it, it is, Assyria will end up taking the, the proceeds of that. Um, Israel itself, says the Lord, has become like a calf, has become like a bull, and it's going to be trodden over, it's going to be driven like a bull. Uh, a picture of, of the, the, having made the calf, Israel itself is going to become like a bull itself. But then uh, there's, there's still a cry in the prophet's heart that people should seek the Lord. So he says, um, sow to yourselves righteousness, reap covenant grace. You, you can do this. Instead of sowing evil and reaping uh, terrible things, sow to yourselves righteousness, reap grace, because it's time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. The prophet is still giving the people this opportunity to turn back. But there is this threat that they will end up in their wicked ways because they have been so pursuing uh, the, the evil things and been pursuing our idols. And then chapter 11 is the story of, of Israel, how God called him from Egypt as his son. It's a very tender chapter, very, very I, I took him as a baby, but he quickly went after idols. But still, God says, he drew them to himself. But my people, he says, were bent on turning away. And there's this cry in verse 8 of chapter 11, God's heart. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I give you up, Israel? When God has cared for them so much, there's this real pain of a parent that has been spurned and turned away from. And then right at the end of the chapter, God says, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to act in anger. I am going to let them come home. I am going to give them a place where they can live. And then in chapter 12, there's the shadowing of the story of Israel as Jacob, this Jacob who went after uh, a, a wife in, in, in Aram, he went after a wife with Laban, and then wrestled, not only wrestled in the womb, but wrestled with God. So there's this idea of Jacob, of Israel, being the ones who wrestle with God. And God actually calls him back uh, to, of all places, to Bethel, where the calf had been set up. And so Jacob himself worshipped God and came to God at Bethel. And there's this theme here that although Israel has treated God like this, like Jacob, he will come back and will worship God again in the place where God calls him to. But at the moment, God says, Israel has been like a fraudulent trader. They've been like a merchant who's uh, deceiving people. And therefore, God says, I'm going to bring you back to that place of having to live in tents. I'm going to bring you back into the desert. You've become so settled. You've become embroiled in the ways of the nations around you. God wants to take uh, uh, take Israel back to this place of wandering, in a sense, of being dependent on him. Because, God says in chapter 13, if for Ephraim at one time was a force to be reckoned with, but they were brought down by their worship of Baal, were brought down by their worship of the master, and then eventually they made a calf. He says they're going to disappear like morning dew. Uh, they had known God in the desert where he cared for them. And God, again, this, this theme of God, God being a, a, a loving parent towards them, but now he's going to turn like a lion to them, and their king will not be able to save them. Even though God, it says uh, in chapter 13, God could have redeemed them. They could have said, where death is your sting, where grave is your victory. They could have known that wonderful redemption, even from death itself. But because of their sinfulness and their idolatry, Samaria, called Shomron in Hebrew, Samaria is guilty and will face devastation. But the last chapter of Hosea is a tender chapter. It kind of has has in it, it 
epitomizes this struggle that's going on between the judgment and also the heart of God that wants to draw his people back to himself and and Hosea says in this last chapter come back to the Lord come back Israel uh, you can say to the Lord we will come back to you we've worshipped idols confess your sin there's a beautiful phrase that says in you orphans find compassion because God is a God of compassion and the book ends with a wonderful picture of flourishing trees of the re-establishment of fruitfulness where there's no more dealing with idols and where the Lord's ways are taken on board the straight ways of the Lord and the righteous walk in them the book comes to an end then with this offer of return this offer of coming home even though Israel was to face this devastation and it came when Assyria came and deported her and destroyed Samaria, her capital. Yet God was determined that one day there should come, there should be a homecoming for Israel, that she should come back one day. And God, of course, was faithful to do that. And we see that even now God is still working out his purposes, still working out his heart, still inviting us as his people to come back to him again and again. God always provides a place for homecoming. Have a very good December the 8th.